I am Lamont at Large. Today I am at the Cicero Cemetery here in Cicero, Indiana. I am here to visit the grave of Ryan White. If you're over the age of 35, then you most likely remember Ryan White's story. It was all over the news. Newspapers meet everything. It was a story that took over many a households for many, many years. So in 1986, when Ryan was about 13 years old, he had went to a hospital to receive a blood transfusion. He was born with hemophilia, it's, I believe a blood clotting disorder. And at that time, little was known about AIDS. It was mainly looked upon as a gay disease. Um, we didn't know much about it. It was still you know, in its infancy, just as a disease and us understanding what it is, how it works. Um, back then, it was fatal in practically 100% of all cases of people who caught it. So Ryan, he contracted pneumonia and went to the hospital. He was very, very sick. And the doctors conducted a test on him and it came out that he had AIDS. And it, the disease itself starts as HIV. And it quickly went past that stage into AIDS. AIDS, uh, HIV turns to AIDS when your T-cell count drops below a certain number. And he was very, very sick. But his story doesn't end there. No, it does not. So like I said, his story was all over the news. And the local school board in the city that he lived in banned him from going to school. Uh, they were afraid, other students, their parents and teachers, they were afraid that they would catch AIDS from him because then again... We didn't know what it was. We didn't know people were thinking you can catch it like a cold. And so they banned them from school. And Ryan and his family, his attorneys, went all the way up, I believe, to the state Supreme Court to get him back into school. Uh, the court overturned the school board's decision, allowing him to get back into school. The school then got a restraining order against Ryan. I mean, this case was a mess. So while he was fighting to go to school, many celebrities, including Elton John and Michael Jackson, uh, took to his cause and he became a spokesperson for the AIDS virus, for AIDS awareness, uh, letting people know, hey, you can't catch it like a cold. It's a blood disease. I had hemophilia and I got it from a blood transfusion. Let me tell you something. This boy lived a very, very tortured life. First of all, you're 13, 14 years old and the doctors pretty much are telling you you're going to die. There is no cure and that's all there is to it. So you're basically living under a death sentence. His family was constantly stalked by the news media. I mean, back in those days, if you think TMZ is bad with stalking people and getting, take, getting pictures, no, no, no. Back in those days, uh, it, there was a lot more money in the print business and they were relentlessly stalked, harassed, phone calls. Many people in the community would not play with Ryan. All the kids, they were afraid of his disease. He basically lived, he had very few friends. He basically lived uh, in his in his house. He never went outside. Uh, people would go to his house, throwing things at him, uh, harassing phone calls. I mean, it was awful for the family. It was awful for, for his uh, siblings and his mother. Just a tortured, tortured life. But then when the news media and outlets started catching on to his story, he became a celebrity. People were going up to him, wanting pictures with him, wanting his autograph. But then he's looking around and he's saying, the only reason why you guys want my autograph, the only reason why you want my pictures is because I have AIDS. And he became this kind of a, uh, a joke in schools. Hey, I'm going to catch AIDS, this, AIDS, that. Just people being ignorant and not knowing any better. And through all his trials and tribulations, this boy, if you want to go look at news clips of him, he carried himself very stoically, uh, had a lot of, a lot of uh, bravery in that little body of his, a lot of courage. And unfortunately, back in those days, AIDS was a death sentence. And 
unfortunately he didn't live long enough to see the advances in modern medicine that we have uh, gained. You look at now, AIDS is no longer the deadly disease that it was. And basically it's, it's something that you get, it's something that you can live with uh, if you have the means to pay for, you know, doctors, medicine, diets, nutrition, and all that stuff. It's definitely still not a disease that you want to get or you want to deal with. So, unfortunately, Ryan White, at the age of 18, he died from his disease on April 8th of 1990. Now we're going to go walk to his grave. This is the grave of Ryan White, December 6th, 1971 to April 8th, 1990. Kid of Courage. I want to read something that's inscribed on the back of his stone. The children began to ask Ryan, are you afraid to die? Ryan responded, if I die, I know I'm going to a better place. Ryan White fell asleep and woke up in heaven on Palm Sunday, April 8th, 1990. Guys, I put a link to the in the description box below of the Ryan White TV movie. I watched it as a child and I am going to watch it again tonight. The pain of this horrific disease, not only the physical, but also the mental, having everyone move away from you, shun you, little kids whose parents told them, don't play with him, he has AIDS. No one being allowed to play with him. This boy never got to have a normal childhood. He didn't get to play with his friends. He didn't get to grow up to date girls. He was 18 years old when he died. You know, a boy's hormones start raging around 12 or 13. What are you gonna do? You can't kiss a girl, you're gonna get AIDS, so they think. That sucks. I feel so bad right now. I feel very terrible for the life that this boy had to endure for five and a half years before his untimely death. And I remember seeing him in interviews, uh, his face looking gaunt, his eyes looking sucking in, and he is in a better place now. And because of his story, now we have an awareness of the disease in itself and that we know that it's not the instant death sentence that it was when he was alive. Rest in peace to Ryan White and to anybody out there watching who might have known him and shunned him and turned your back on him and you didn't want to touch him and hang around with him. Well, listen, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for your ignorance. This is Lamont at Large. Thank you for watching, guys. Much appreciated. As always, peace out.